Hey all, this is Reddit Tosker, and I have a question I want to ask you. Did you see dungeons in the latest Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom trailer? I think at this point most people's answers will be yes, but not everyone is convinced. And there's even a small amount of comments that I've seen that do believe that these are the dungeon equivalents of Tears of the Kingdom, but are not sure that they're going to be close enough to classic dungeons to make them happy. So in this video, I want to talk about the shots that imply dungeons in the last trailer. Why I think that they do in fact represent the dungeon equivalents, and my early assumptions as to how they're going to work. Let's start with the important shots. There are three types that are more important than the others. The shots that show Link in the underground fire area, the shots that show the structure in the desert, and the shots that show the water area. Let's start with the fire dungeon. What we presume is the Fire Dungeon is an enormous underground area. Link is wearing the Firebreaker armor, implying that you'll need heat resistance to traverse this area. That assumption is corroborated by the fire particles in the atmosphere and the abundance of lava. Link is heading towards multiple large structures, with minecart rails weaving into and between them. It's unclear exactly how many of these structures there could be here, the structure on the furthest left seems to continue in that direction. And given the size of this cavern, it wouldn't be unreasonable to suspect that if we panned the camera to the left, we would see many more of these structures. Further, in the trailer, a different shot of the same area shows off a minecart with the Goron symbol on it, which isn't a surprise since much of this architecture does look like it's from Goron make. What is interesting, though, is that there is also Many of these Zonai lanterns that we've seen in various other locations, implying that this architecture is of Goron make with Zonai influence. This shot also reveals that this area is simply huge, and it's connected to another area that seems pretty large itself. In this shot, you can see in the distance that tree that we've seen before. In a different trailer, it looks like that's the cavernous underground mushroom area suggesting perhaps that there are multiple ways of getting into this Goron dungeon area, and that those ways are sizable themselves. Now let's compare this Goron dungeon to the other possible dungeon locale. In the scene where you see Sidon as a companion, you appear to be in a series of sky islands with Zora architecture. There's a blue hue to the stonework, and in the background you can see statues that look like fish hooks. And to the left, you see what appears to be an elaborate water puzzle, consisting of using water to fill up urns for some reason. Interestingly, we also see the Zonai lanterns here that we saw in the Goron area, suggesting once again that this is Zora architecture with a Zonai influence, which would explain why there's Zora structures in the sky to begin with. Apart from this shot, there are several other places that have this similar architecture including the spots where Link is jumping into bubbles, and the spot where Link is jumping from platform to platform trying to reach a waterfall. Interestingly, all of these locations have these blue particles, which I had previously speculated might be anti-gravity particles, which is what causes Link to be able to jump so high. You see him jumping in the platform to platform section and him jumping into the bubble. But they could just be an aesthetic flair to differentiate this dungeony area to other dungeony areas. It's not clear to me if all of these sky islands are relatively close together, or if they're spread out across the Zora region, and you have to go to different sections to do different things. Now, let's assume, just for the sake of argument, that these two sections are in fact representative of what dungeons consist of. That they'll be very open air in this manner, and that there's no big interior dungeons like a lot of people were hoping and, and expecting. Well, in that case, for me, this is dungeon enough. I hate the Divine Beasts in Breath of the Wild. I hated them then, I continue to hate them. Those things are not dungeons. They're tiny, they all look the same, and the look that they chose to adopt is ugly. There's no enemy variety inside of them either. Just mini guardians and floating heads. I don't even like the music. In fact, I didn't know that there was different themes for the different Divine Beasts until somebody pointed it out to me in the comments. I found them entirely forgettable. Now, assuming that what we've seen in the trailer does reflect what dungeons are going to look like, this open-air environment dungeon, then I'd say that they addressed pretty much every problem I had with the Divine Beasts. 
The areas are not small, in fact, they're enormous. Maybe even bigger than we realize. The areas visually look very good, and even better, they looked distinct from one another. It's not the same gross, divine beast interior. They're certain to have better enemy variety, because of the Zonai influence we'll probably have a bunch of Zonai enemies in these areas, but each area might also have enemies that are just for that location. The Zora dungeon seems to have this inky black shark enemy that looks like the inky substance that you only see in this area. But that's not even necessary. Even if it was all just Zonai constructs, that alone is head and shoulders above what the Divine Beasts had for enemy variety. And most importantly, these areas will probably have individual unique themes, musical themes. Obviously, we don't know that for sure, but I would be shocked if they poured this much effort into making the locations look visually pleasing and distinct, and then decided not to give them each a different musical theme. So I'm happy. I'll take it. If these are the dungeons, I say they are sufficient. However, I think that maybe these aren't the dungeons, and that in fact, I'm selling Nintendo too short. The last dungeon-looking area is a building that rises from the Gerudo Desert and looks enterable. It looks very much like what a traditional dungeon would look like. And the scene that shows it rising looks like an in-game cutscene. It looks like you did something in the Gerudo area and that caused this dungeon to rise from the sand, allowing you to enter. Now keep that in mind while I take a closer look at the Zora areas. As I mentioned before, the Zora areas have this inky substance in several of their locations, and I don't think I saw it anywhere else. And there's also a shot that lets you see that this inky substance is falling from the Sky Islands and going into Zora water areas. Here you can see a stream falling into the East Reservoir Lake, and the water in the lake looks muddy and polluted. In fact, a lot of the water in this area looks muddy and polluted. And while I'm at it, let me also point out that in the scene that we see Sidon, he does not have his tear in his hand, suggesting maybe that he hasn't acquired it yet. So based on this, this is what I think the game is going to look like. I think that each region will be dealing with some kind of disaster, a disaster that you will help remedy. For the Zora area, it will be cleaning up all of these muddy things, going to the Sky Islands and stopping them at their source. You will take one of the champion descendants, one of your new companions, the one associated with the area that you're tackling, into these locations. So Sidon will help you with the Zora dungeon area. And then after you do some unknown condition in different areas, you will unlock the ability to go into the actual dungeon. In the Gerudo area, you had to do something to cause this structure to rise from the sands. It wasn't like that at the beginning, so I suspect you're going to take Riju around, do something with Riju, and that will cause the temple to be visible. Maybe you even need to use the companions to solve puzzles. I don't know exactly how the companions are going to work. But then, having unlocked the dungeon proper, you'll be able to go into the actual dungeon, and the tier will be at the end of the dungeon. And that's why Sidon doesn't have it while you're still in the Sky Island areas. You haven't unlocked the dungeon yet. Once you go into the dungeon and clear it, Sidon will have the tier. And this scene in the trailer where you see the champion descendants with tears and all charging forward is probably late in the game when you've gotten a tier to each of them already. So that's what I think. I'm very happy with what we've seen and will be satisfied if there's nothing else, but I am also holding out hope that there will be other d interior dungeons that are a bit more traditional. Anyway, that's the end of this video. As always, thank you very much for watching.